action today is Tuesday, May 30th, 2017. This is MMA Junkie Radio, and we have a fun show planned for you guys today. All of our guests are in the second hour, so the first hour is open for you guys to call in and sound off. Talk a little bit about this card that happened over the weekend. I thought it was a pretty good card. I think George and I both agreed. We gave it a score of a, or a grade of a B. It's pretty solid. It was fun. We could talk about the Junkie Gathering. We could talk. Whoa. What? M watching uh, ESPN and this poor girl throws a softball pitch and gets hit. It looked like in the head, right? How did they not have uh, the netting? Oh, you mean it was a foul tip or something? No, like, you know when you go to, like, a batting cage or something? So they have, uh, like, I guess in their studio they put something like that, right? And th this girl, you know, they have, like, a hot girl, right? Uh, yeah. She throws an underhanded pitch to this guy who hits it, and it comes right at her head. Well, it comes right back at her. You yeah. Mm How -hmm. do they not uh, think that one out? Eh. I wouldn't have done they're that. Like, sure. like, uh, I've been hit like that a lot. <laughs> Hi, George. What's up? You feeling better today? In two minutes. No? no? no Danny's not recovered either. My back's messed up. Oh, that? Yeah. I yeah, felt good, was, too. That was all right. That was... <laughs> that was right from that two days ago. The hip is... The hip slash back. Hmm. I guess, I guess I guess you did have to fly across the country. And I got up today at the time that before we we would have gone to bed if it was still junkie gathering week. Oh yeah? Yeah. I got up at five my time, so it's two o'clock your guys' time. Did you go home and go to bed? No, I got up for my other job. <laughs> what other job? My my uh, video producing job. No. After that and after Junkie, did you go home and go to bed? I will when Junkie's over. Yesterday. Oh, no, yesterday I only did Junkie. Right, and then did you go home and rest is what, what I'm asking. No, because I'm a dummy. <laughs> I went home. Well, what do you I didn't, expect? I didn't sleep. I didn't sleep. <laughs> you guys are up in a minute. Who was it that got hit in the head? I don't know. That's the actual mad dog right there? Christopher Russo is his name, right? Mm-hmm. I've heard of him. He's got a little empire going there on Sirius XM, I believe. I had never seen the face, though. I think I'd seen the face. I just didn't know that was him. Is there a little bit of bacon neck going on there? Bacon? Oh, bacon neck? Yeah, that bacon <laughs> neck with the T-shirt? <laughs> no. He's almost there. Yeah. I hate bacon neck. You do? All right, guys, coming up from 10. Stand by. This is your captain speaking. We are making our descent into Las Vegas McGarren Airport. On behalf of our crew, we'd like to thank you for flying MMA Junkie Airlines. Now please fasten your seatbelts and put your tray tables in your upright position because the descent is going to be a little bit bumpy. <laughs> Hi, right, Junkie Nation. It's time to roll, baby, on MMA Junkie Radio with gorgeous George and Gold. This is what we do and why we do it, baby. All night long, we roll it! Yes! The MMA Junkie Radio Revolution is upon us. Can you dig it? There's no escape. No escape. Through the vast frontier of cyberspace and through a sea of stars in outer space. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We've solidified our combat communication stranglehold. We are controlling transmission. With the use of MMA Junkie Radio and Sirius XM satellite radio technology. MMA Junkie Radio. Commence transmission. Live from MMA Junkie Radio HQ in the fight capital of the world. Las Vegas, Nevada. Here are your hosts, Gorgeous George and Goes. It's Tuesday, May 30th. 
Happy but uh, happy birthday to our cousin Lewis goes. Yeah, today's his birthday. You know, a lot of you people know cousin Lewis. He's been on our show a couple times. Yeah. And it's the second day of this week here that follows the Junkie Gathering and UFC Fight Night 109. I'm your host, Gorgeous George. With me, as always, is the Devious and Dastardly Goes. All right, he's co-host, back east, handling all the producing duties. It's going to be Danny. Hope you all had a nice uh, Memorial Day holiday, weekend and holiday itself. Yeah, I wanted to say something, George, because we, we got a chance to do this during our Junkie Gathering. But I'm not so sure we had too much of a chance to say it on the air. And I think you might have touched on it because I wasn't too much on the air on the last day. But uh, our intern, Jason, is no longer with us. Yeah. He took off back to – well, actually, he's in California right now. But is he? Yeah, I think he's at Disneyland. But uh, he went back to the Couve, and uh, he had a very good stint here, and he helped out a lot, and especially with the junkie gathering and uh, just cutting his teeth. George did a great job of getting him some air time, I think way more than he even expected, and he did a lot of – behind the scenes stuff so it, it was a, a good experience for him i think a good experience for us and we we're very lucky to have him for that short time i saw him hustling those last few days when really he was just off he should have just been a, a junkie per se mm -hmm. like the rest but he didn't participate in trivia because he was adding up tabulating the scores yeah and at 1921 he was kind of the coordinator for the fighters and guests that were arriving and entering via the rotating stage so it looked like you know he was willing to go hard all the way till the end danny too when you think about it it was his vacation and he was out there hustling too with uh with jason so yeah those guys really uh i mean danny was here every day helping produce so props to both of you guys man because you really had every right to just sit out there and have a good time and and you helped out the show and i think that's what's unique about the show is you don't really think about it you just do it it's just part of being a team and um you'd even see junkies come in here and they would see the water out there, and they'd lift it up and put it in or stock the fridge. It's just a really cool environment, and uh, we're lucky to have you guys. Word. I'm all about that. And Danny's like, yeah, that's right. You're happy to have me. You don't say <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to speak for Jason, but, it, I mean, it was it's a fun type of work. It, do, it's not, it, it doesn't really qualify as work as far as I'm concerned. It's just something cool to do. I'm watching this brawl here between the Nationals and the Giants. Mm -hmm. Harper got involved in that, right? Yeah. Harper and Trout, two of the best players in baseball. You know, a lot of times those guys kind of like to loaf out there, not necessarily lead the charge, but I guess he was one of the major players there, although he's being criticized for a left hand that started off like it might have something and then just kind of faded into mm -hmm. a half-hearted slap but with the fist. I, I firmly believe that when they go up like that, they really don't even know if they're going to engage until it's kind of too late. Well, here's one thing I'll give it up for. Whenever you see a soccer fight, those guys run, and they'll kick you. Yeah. Like, do you remember when Fabrizio Verdum started off his fight versus Travis Brown, and he kicked them <laughs> right in the jaw? Like, those type of kicks. Those are dangerous, So man. they may With not studs have. studs like that? Oh, I know. The studs, the cleats. And they're coming in full charge, and you're really, and they're cold cocking you too. They're not, it's not like they're saying square up, you know. I mean, they're coming out of nowhere and kicking you. But it is a fight at that point, and pretty much anything goes. I imagine. I don't think you could reach for a bat. I think they have some sort of a gentleman's yeah. agreement that says whatever we have here, you know. Not um, the baseball furies. Yeah, really. Lewis tough. The but last man standing. Yeah, he's he's walking into our. Darius is here. Really? You know what? Well, I saw him in the lobby. Yeah. Oh, so Darius the lobby from, of uh, from Poland is also still here. Louis Tuff from England's here. But Darius from Poland, the last time, he kind of had this thing where he likes to be the last guy to leave. So oh. he, he may still have claimed that. Where'd you see him? The lobby of Luxor or Mandalay? He didn't see me. Yet. Oh. Did he look like he was leaving or what was he doing? Yeah, I think so. It sounded creepy. Okay. Yeah. What? Did he look like he was leaving? Hmm? He said he didn't see me. Yeah, I think he, was he didn't see me. Yeah. That voice is I haven't Lewis seen them. I haven't the seen them the last couple of days. All right. Well, uh, Darius is a blast. That's for sure. And 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 with that, the junkie gathering, I believe, will be over with those last two gentlemen leaving. Mm -hmm. Who shall we give credit to, Lewis Tough, or Darius? Lewis Tough, because he he's leaving the battlefield right now. I this see. is the battlefield. I see. All right. So Darius from Poland next. 
Next time you may want to get a Tuesday night flight out. <laughs> the only problem is that that uh, puts you in the position of having to get another room. You know, once you check out of your room, man, if you have plans, all right, no problem. But if you don't and you're loafing, oof, you just can't wait to get to that airport mm -hmm. and, and, and get the hell on out. And then if you have one of those flights that has um, stay o uh, what do you call it? Stay over? Not stay over. Um, a lounge? No, no, no. When you, when you have different legs on a flight. Layover? Layover. Layover. Yeah, if you have those and you have one of those longer ones, those are the most, those are the worst. I don't, I I don't mind brutal. traveling so much. Really? I mean, the Afghanistan one was very brutal, but uh, as long as I'm doing it with someone, I'm, it's not too bad for me. I, I'm not I, too big. I'm good with a couple that. hours, maybe the third, and, and that's where I'm like, Jesus, this sucks. Because what you can do is always just kind of walk the airport. And then pick up, you know, a, a local paper or some snacks, take a piss, wash your face, check up on the Internet, whatever. But <laughs> there's a time where you're just kind of sitting there and then all of a sudden, you know, it just gets old because you're watching your bags a little bit. You can't really sleep and drift off too much or, or that'll be that. There he is. We were we, just talking about you. We got a problem here now. Yeah. Now we got to figure out whose flight leaves later. <laughs> what time does your flight leave, Darius? Midnight? Almost at midnight. Oh, oh, my God. He took it. <laughs> so we had just said that because Darius wasn't in the studio, he's not the last man leaving. But here he is. So, yeah, he's got his title back. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> we asked Lewis. We said, so who's going to get the, uh, the the last man standing award? And he kind of goes like me. Points <laughs> to his chest. Uh, <laughs> and in comes Darius with a later itinerary. But you know what I like about this, now, George? There, now, Lewis Tough may beat him as far as who gets home last. Yeah. He's going all the way back to the U.K. Darius goes back to New York. I like that it's a veteran and a rookie. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, Facebook, man. So many nice messages there. You know, in regards to the Junkie Gathering and, and the Junkie Nation community. So thank you for any of those directed towards us. I mean, a lot of you basically uh, – Saying nice things about each other, that's cool. You know what I've heard more and more? Mm. I just heard it this morning again, was people really liked that you were there more. And I honestly think you were there more because you had less shit to deal with as mm -hmm. far as the show on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So they were just like, that's so cool that he hung out more this year. But I thought I made it to every single event. This year? Last year or previous years. It's not like I ever uh, said, what's today? Fuck that. I mean, you've missed a few, but like, you had more hangout time, like at Center Bar and out here and stuff like that. Mm. You're just more sociable. Really? Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Jeez. Okay. I didn't know that 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 it was. They w not trust, like trust that. me. They would take you over fighters any day. I've heard that plenty of times. Well, I'll tell you what. I could kick it up a notch next year if uh, if I don't have this fucking knot in my back or whatever the Did hell you go it to is. a chiropractor or something? No. Well, it was Memorial Day yesterday, mm -hmm. so we tried, and he's just not there. Can you go today? Well, I should have made an appointment right away, but um, to try and do something for later. I knew it because he's open 8 to 12, mm -hmm. takes a two-hour lunch, and then does 2 to 6. So I knew I couldn't do anywhere between 8 to 12. I guess if I did 8, but I imagine that's booked since last week. He's got a good Yelp. Because you do 30 minutes massage and then the, then the adjustment. So even if you get uh, the 8, you're not getting adjusted till about 8.30, 8.35. And then I'm probably out of there by 8.45 here, about 9.15. So I, I maybe by a miracle could do the 8.30 one too. But I just figured, ah, he's probably booked. I'll, I'll see if I can squeeze in there in the afternoon. When you see the NFL injury report, I used to see back spasms. Or turf toe, and I would just laugh. I'd be like, that's a pussy right there. Just get up and play. Take a shot or take a pill or something, right? Um, the one time I did have a back issue, and I think it was like a back spasm, it lasted about 24 hours. Wow. It's horrible. I have a pinch. The worst. I, I have a pinch nerve. I've never had an ingrown toenail because that's what turf toe is, right? No, I think it's more than that. Oh, I thought that's what it was. If that's all it is, geez, you'd think they'd be able to. Well, because I know what it's it is, uh, right? It really digs in, so I imagine right. it can hurt pretty bad. But um, So I, I can't really say anything about that. But the back issue, the one time that I did have it, I, I was, and Deion Sanders used to get that a lot. Mm, the turf toe. Uh, both, actually. Yeah. Well, here's another thing that I used to laugh at. A bruised heel. I used to go, a bruised heel? That's a joke. And I got one finally, and it takes you about two months to get over it. You basically just can't do any physical activity. You have to rest it. 
and because you use your heels so much that it just, I guess, gets hurt over and over and whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, a bruised heel is no joke. Hmm. And now it's not painful. It's just bothersome because you can't recover. You can immediately tell up if you go up and down the court or run on the fields or whatever, you're just not going to be able to do it. I was thinking about the flag football game because it was one week, one week ago today, you know, meaning this evening. But uh, that was a good time. Somebody had posted a, a video of, I think it was Eric Nixick taking <laughs> off on a run, and then Lackey dives and does that funny back roll. Gets the flag, right? Is that the one he yeah, got the flag? He got the flag, was, but he kind of fell funny. It just looked, he looked like that. May uh, have been where he hurt his dogs. rib. He was complaining about a rib, mm -hmm. and I told him, well, more than likely, that was the most physical activity you did. And he was sick too. And he was sick. Yeah, he was sick going into all this. That's why he didn't really drink so much. But he had a lot of injuries. He ran face first into the wall. There were a lot of stupid things he did. Yeah. Like Go said, in the second hour, we'll have some guests coming your way. We'll catch up with Eric Esch, a.k.a. Butterbean, former professional boxer and MMA fighter. See what he's all about. I've seen him fight a couple times up close when he was fighting in Hawaii versus Cabbage Correa, former UFC veteran. And, of course, I've seen him bo uh, box, the king of the four-rounders, they called him. Super cool. After the event in Hawaii, everybody hung out at the host hotel. And that dude's funny. He's just, you know, it's business. He's hanging out and taking pictures and talking fights or whatever. But you could tell it'd be real hard to get under his skin. Oh, yeah. Uh, on fight week, regardless of who you are. He, he really was there to have a good time. Uh, whatever that, that guy. Uh, they're on the main card. And as I look at UFC 212, you know, there's a lot of bang for your buck at the top, man. You got two top five strawweights in Gedalia. That's not on the main card. And I'm all for Fox Sports 1, help sells the pay-per-view. But, geez, the pay-per-view has to be worth it, too. First, you got to get the, the hardcores that go, yeah, I want it. And I'm hearing a lot of hardcores not wanting to get 212. But what about a... Sunset on Marlins, uh, not Sander, Marlon Moraes. Marlon Moraes is, is a guy that could potentially be fighting for a title very soon. He's fun to watch. He's a good fighter. So, yeah, you would think. But, I mean, we've heard a lot of Fox executives talk about just how important that one spot is and what it does and how many people actually watch that. So, who knows? I mean, at the end of the day, these guys have to know something we don't, right? Couldn't you put Maderos and Silva there? That's like that type of fight. Yeah. Yeah, I guess right? you could. And either one of those guys is not an immediate contender, maybe Marais more than a Sun Tzu, but a Sun Tzu is never far from the top, so feature them. Maybe maybe because uh, you're actually putting out money for a guy that you've never seen. Maybe they're thinking, all right, well, let's just put him in the feature about there on, on FS1 versus Eric Silva, Yancey Medeiros. We already know what they're all about. You're, you know what you're paying for, the casual fans. I don't know, man. In the past, champions coming from other leagues, it's been hot or cold. Some of them get immediate love, mm -hmm. like Alvarez. Hey, yeah, yeah, Cerrone, step up. You know what I mean? And then other ones just, oh, yeah, you got a you got a good name, but you're you're down in the prelims. I've never been able to figure that out. I guess it all, it all has to do with the analytics, you know, just how popular a fighter is. I guess Marias isn't the most popular. I mean, he's exciting. He's got highlights. He was a champion. But – Charismatic, lacking a little just because you really have to track his career and follow him and, and know his story, you know, and he speaks good English, but he just doesn't really, you know, put himself out there as a as a, a swagger type guy. Yeah, I can see that. I think of a guy like Joe Lazon is getting close to leaving the sport, right? I don't think he's going to be fighting for too much long, but you know who's going to become, in my opinion, the next Joe Lazon? Justin Gaethje. That's a guy that I think the UFC should really try and push. And they have already kind of pushed him a little bit with the press conference and Michael Johnson and all that. I think that dude will be the next Joe Lazon. Just a yeah. guy that we're super stoked to watch every fight. Doesn't matter. He's going to be collecting bonuses left and right. I'm still anxious to see this McGregor-Mayweather thing. If the UFC May and McGregor agreed two weeks ago, what's the deal with Mayweather? What are they waiting on? I'm telling you, dude. Egos. Egos, egos, egos. Constantly changing. Still I'm not even sure all three of them want to do it. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I think they do. I think there's a lot of money that would be made by all three. But, yeah, egos is probably part of it. 
Boxing but at least, egos are at least two of them seem to of settle. Control. I guess really only one of them seem to settle. McGregor, what are you going to pay me? Then whatever the UFC gets on their own, I guess if McGregor's happy with his purse, that's on them. So, yeah, it is two egos left, but one of them seems to be satisfied. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And, and Floyd, I mean, oh, man. I'm kind of over it, dude. I really am. I don't even really I know. Anymore. So am I. But wouldn't you like to see, as you talked about Gagey and Michael Johnson and Ferguson just sitting there like this? Well, Ferguson's a great fighter, and he's not fighting. Well, he should have fought in March, but Habib, you know, had the weight-cutting issues. Mm -hmm. And then what is going to happen with Habib when he comes back? Will they make him go to 70? Will they make him get a proper dietitian? No disrespect to whoever he has, but, you know, somebody, that I guess, of note that delivers. Uh, and then Nate Diaz is just kind of fumbling around, too. He's only waiting for Connor. I guess he partially agreed to one fight, maybe another. And as long as he pay him, he'll show up. But that that's a division that could all of a sudden just get an infusion if they figure out McGregor Mayweather. If McGregor Mayweather doesn't have, happen and McGregor comes back, then it'll be nice to see who he fights. I guess it, I guess Ferguson's leading that charge. <laughs> Diaz, yeah, let, let's, let, let me ask you that. And Junkie Nation, if – they say, well, Mayweather had too big of an ego, or he pushed out. McGregor comes back. Who should he fight? I mean, Nurmi's out, right? Yeah. 24-0, 8-0, much respect, but he's kind of out. So, do, do, and, and even Dana says he's not that crazy about Diaz Part 3 yet because that will sell well. Yeah, he'll, it's going to make he'll money. He'll get crazy, but should he get it again? You know, I mean, that, let me see. It'd be a title shot. But how of confident are you in Nate Diaz? Because Nate Diaz has to keep winning for that to make sense. Whoever you give Nate Diaz next, he's got to win no, that I'm fight. No, I'm saying if, he loses, if McGregor you comes can't back, do that McGregor fight ever again. If, if McGregor comes back, do you give him Nate Diaz part three? No, Tony no. Ferguson, right? Well, okay, you got to give him Tony Ferguson. I think right. that's what makes the most sense. But how many times have we talked about money, right? right. And, and the money fight is Nate. Um, if Nate doesn't fight, and he has to fight someone else, which he's probably asking for abstract, just crazy numbers right now. But it's Connor that makes that all work. Connor and Nate. If you put Nate against someone else, you put him up against Eddie Alvarez, it's not going to sell the way the other fight did. So this is what you do. You put Connor and Tony and on the card. That's your main event. And mm -hmm. you put Nate versus someone as the co-main. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That way if Ferguson falls out or too. you just have some protection there, that's the question. Maybe Gagey if he wins? What if Gagey starches Johnson? You'd go, damn, he was for real. He's undefeated. Play he was the World Series of Fighting champ. And now he just beat one of our top contenders. We got to get him in there against someone. Gagey would be insane. Right? Yeah. I mean, Pettis I like has come back, but he still has to get a win. Alvarez and Poirier just seem to be locked in with each other. Poirier may have had a say, say in it if he had finished Alvarez. Or if Alvarez in the comeback had finished Poirier, I guess maybe he's back alive. Uh, RDA moved up. Uh, Kevin Lee's got his hands full with, with Kiesa, but you see what I'm saying? So this division is just kind of like, it's probably like my fourth favorite division right now, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden, no Mayweather, and that comeback from McGregor, and all of a sudden it could, poof, become number one. No Mayweather, and Connor does take another fight. Would you ever be open to that talk happening again? What or talk? are you just over it, Mayweather? If, they, uh, oh. if after that he comes back and says, all right, we got it all figured out, let's do it, would you be on board, or would you be like, I don't even want to hear this bullshit? I'd rather not. I'd rather just continue with MMA. Okay. But if the but if there is some big Dallas Cowboy Stadium show, then I think those eyeballs we benefit from it. What sucks is the other fighters at 55 they don't, but I'm not them. So as a fan, yeah, it sucks, but it would be pretty big for the sport. Those guys would make a lot of money and and uh, bring some eyeballs, you know, to us, junkie. MMA, Junkie Radio, yeah. But I wouldn't be like, it's not my first choice. I'd rather he just continue to march on and, Me too. and chase history, even do maybe do two, three title defenses at 55, and if he really wants to try again, if it's the right champion at at, uh, at 70, why not? That's what yeah. you live for, right, to try this shit, isn't it? And if you fail, you just go, fuck, what do you want from me, man? I won two world titles. You know, I was willing to fight the best boxer of all time in some people's eyes in his sport, and that didn't come together, and I, I went for it here. But I guess th this 45-er chugged as, as much as he could. You'd have, to, you'd have to tip your hat. The Frankie Edgar fight that we all felt he was running away from for so long, 
Is it the same fight that it would be now if Frankie went up and fought him? Well, Frankie's always a bigger name as he continues to win. But is it the same fight? In other words, has did Connor kind of close the gap a little bit? Do you think he's still kind of weary of that fight? Frankie looked incredible in that last fight. He did. It depends on how much he continues to work on takedown defense. And cardio. Right. Because Frankie doesn't stop. Right. If he continues to work on that, then I suppose the fight becomes less scary. But he's just a big guy, and he's very confident. He's very precise with his strikes. So uh, maybe he feels like he could do to him what, what Jose did. And you know Jose and Holloway. I I watched ha Jose and Edgar again. There's no reason 200? they should be taking Holloway. If oh, Jose yeah. fights like that, there really isn't a reason to take Holloway. I think he basically should be able to handle him and at home. But I'm taking Holloway because I like the kid. I'm trailing in the picks, and you just have to take take a chance. But but um, hopefully he, he he always gets better too. Mm -hmm. And if he continues to just get better. That's the and difference. fight's a great fight, and maybe catches Jose because he he's relentless, man. He's got incredible reach and size, so we we shall see. But you can't. But just boy, did Jose bounce like back, man, from uh, that fight versus McGregor. Mm -hmm. He put it on Frankie pretty good. Yeah, I couldn't believe. I mean, there, there was almost hardly any successful attempts to get him down to, for sure to get him on the ground, but even to just lock things up, Jose is just so incredibly fast. It's amazing. 866-522-2846. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I'd also like to get your thoughts on what's happening with the women's 145-pound division. Jermaine D. Randami is saying she does not want to fight Cyborg. She feels like basically once a cheater, always a cheater. And she is willing to abdicate the, the, the throne there and, and give up her title and just return to 135. In fact, going so far as to say... Give me a 135-pound fight. Now, that puts in the OC of the pickle of going, well, that was fucking dumb. I think we either have him. to just get rid of the division or, all right, we take the title away from her, put Cyborg in, but then against who, I don't know. You know, is the Cyborg Magana thing really a, a bigger deal than we know or, or could she fight someone else? And even then, again, guys, if they find her someone else, like the rumor is probably maybe Kat Zingano, 0-2 in her last uh to Bantamweight fights, mm -hmm. like it's like you're force-feeding making a division to build around someone. At least with Ronda, there was more pieces. I mean, there was Strike Force history, Invicta history, and here there's just Cyborg and a couple of what's left at, at, at Invicta, but there's really not much to build around. Even though Cyborg's a superstar, I think she's a phenomenal athlete. I just don't know what they should do with it, but I really think they should just go, we're, we're over it, you know, and just keep giving Cyborg mega fights, I guess, at one... She won't even take them at 140, so I guess at 145 versus whoever has the ball to step up. All right, you're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM, Rush 93. Stay close. We'll be right back.
Hey, idiot. Yeah, you. Can you please tap that rather large fellow on the shoulder and tell him it's time for more MMA Junkie Radio with Gorgeous George and Goes? Thank you. All right, so what do you think of this situation with uh, D. Randami and Cyborg and the division and this, that, whatever? I think that the UFC could maybe be a little bit happy about it because it would be an excuse to get rid of a decision which was clearly built for Cyborg. Division. Division. Yeah. What did I say? Decision. Division. Um, built for Cyborg, and that just hasn't worked out. It'd be a good, good way of just doing that. We experimented, and we're putting it on hold, mm-hmm. right? We're not saying that. They're never going to go, well, that was the dumbest thing ever. They're just going to say, we're putting it on hold. We're focusing on the next season of 125, and Cyborg can still fight. Cyborg has said she don't care about the titles. So Cyborg can still fight under the UFC contract. We'll give her super fights to whoever wants to fight, and uh, and, and maybe we'll revisit this. If you're Jermaine, though, this is an awful career move, really bad. I don't see how she goes down to 135 and gets things that she wants or ask for fights, she's going to get put in there with killers. They're going to make it hurt. She went 4-1. and one. Her only loss was to Amanda Nunes. So she competes. That's for damn sure. But you're right. It, You know, I mean, on the one hand, the UFC should have known better. Should have better known better. Even Holm wants to drop. But who knows what kind of conversations they had, what kind of a commitment they were looking for. Rhonda echoed – Rhonda said something very similar as well. She did not want to fight Cyborg for pretty much the same reasons, and that didn't seem to derail her career. But that's, you know, a complete global superstar versus just the young lady who can fight from Holland. want to welcome to the show Lewis Tuff from the U.K. Hi, guys. He prefers not to be aligned with the city of London. No, no, it's not, it's not that. It's just um, – so anyone from England would hear that I'm not from London. Yeah, but coming over here, everyone's like, "Where are you from?" And I say London, and they go, "Oh, you live right. by." The he's, he's like he's forty-five Man- minutes outside of Manchester. Yeah, but they just say Manchester. It's easier. It's just easier. Yeah. yeah, but okay. So, properly, where where is the town you're from? What's so the name? I'm of from it? Wolverhampton, which they've got a home of the wolves. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's how far is that from London? Is that is that a suburb of London? Oh no, it's about um, I don't know, three hundred miles away. 300 miles. So really? Yeah. Okay, now I see why you don't want to co-sign with London yeah, at all. Yeah. So, so it'd be like almost Vegas versus Yeah, uh, like me still Southern being California George from bit. L.A., yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's, I mean, what you've got to remember is there's so many towns and cities in between as well. Right. So like with here, everything's so spaced out. In England, we all have like a, a real identity with where we're from, um, especially when it comes to football teams and sports. So. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I, I moved to London a couple of years ago. Love it there, but oh, you live in London. I live in London. But well, then you're origi- from But I'm originally from Wolverhampton. I only moved about a year and a half ago. So okay, so I think we yeah. can stick with Lewis. From yeah, London sorry, it's a lot point. easier that way. <laughs> I'm gonna look it up here where Wolverhampton is. Um, I'm, I'm not suggesting that you want to go there. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> go to London. Don't go to Wolverhampton. I've been to London. Yeah, and I've been to Manchester. I have never been to Wolverhampton, but I follow the EPL and I know that. That yeah. team was – oh, so you're in Midlands area, right? Yeah, Midlands, yeah. Okay, so you're north of Birmingham. Yeah. So you could almost be Lewis from Birmingham. I, I'd rather be Lewis from London because there's a rivalry between people from Wolverhampton and Birmingham. Right, and you currently <laughs> live in London. <laughs> I live in London, so that's fair. All right, did you have a good time at the Junkie Gathering? It's It's been so much more than I could have ever hoped and expected. It's It's been amazing. This is my first time in Vegas. Um, and – I kind of, it was a bit of a last minute decision to come out. Mm-hmm. Um, every day that I listened to the show, everyone was talking about the gathering coming up, and I thought, oh, maybe, maybe not. And one night I had a couple of beers and I started checking and you you know, just online. Hit accept, yeah, enter. I, I, a message goes and said, goes, I think I might come. Like, should I come on this day or this day? And he said, oh, yeah, come for as long as you can. And I went for it. And um, I, I, dr- I, I bought a $3,000 laptop on a drunken night as yeah. well. <laughs> I, I was sick of Windows, and everybody had been telling, or not everybody, but a few people had been telling me about Apple. And of course, if you're gonna, your first computer you want to be good, 17 inch. And then I remember my cousin goes, he goes, you're always talking shit on Windows, and look, it's 300 bucks off. You know the the the, well back then I was G money. The G money I know, would just press that button, and I just go, yeah, I raise my cup, and boom, I hit it, <laughs> passed out, forgot. Next thing you know, 
You get the knock, yeah. and you're like, what the fuck's that? You know, I, UPS, did somebody order something? You like, forgot for that long? Well, as soon as I saw it, I go, shit, that's right, I ordered a laptop. But it was one of those drunken stupors. Yeah. And I, I, I think I wasn't even sure that I had hit it. I think I said I did it, but I probably thought there was still like that one more step where they yeah. go, are you sure? Or confirmed or something like that. And Blowing to it, the breathalyzer. And, and, or I even thought sure. it was probably going to be five to seven days, and it turned out to be like next day delivery or something. But yeah, no, proud I'm of you, man, for doing that. It, it wasn't really a drunk decision. It was a, I'd thought about it, and, but I hadn't really checked out how much it was going to cost. And when I looked, it, it wasn't as bad as I was expecting. And um, You did the dual flight and hotel, yeah, right? Yeah, flight and hotel. Um, and I just thought, I deserve a holiday. Mm-hmm. I'm, I've never been to Vegas. If I'm coming and I know that the, we've got all these events planned, I would have enough to do. And if I didn't really click with a lot of the people, which I knew that I would, in, but you don't know. You don't, you know, don't know until right. you get out here. And you don't know what the, the people are like and the family atmosphere and everyone's so inclusive. From the first second that I walked down to the racing sports book and said, hi, I'm Lewis from London. Everyone's like, oh, let me buy you a drink. Oh, you know, let's talk. What, where are you from? What are you about? How long have you been into the sport? It, it's just been unbelievable. And I know that the people who haven't come out here and just listen to the junkie gathering talk, they're probably getting bored of it. Right. But the reason that we're all going on about it is because it's something special. And I, I know that I will come back. And the awesome. worst thing is you're stuck in Vegas. Uh, like, yeah. let's say you walk in yeah, and go, what a bunch of sucks. cunts. You know what? You're stuck in Vegas, man. There's so much to do in Vegas. You could break away and just give us the finger and move on from you know with your life or whatever. But it it, it won't be like that. You'll be treated well. Uh, I will say though, Lewis gave me the Heisman on day one. He yeah. Com- he confessed. He doesn't this know what the Heisman me. is though. Oh, the Heisman is uh, no, the best college player in the, uh, in the land every year. Get this trophy where the guy's holding the ball and he's basically shucking somebody off. I've or, watched, I've or watched face 30s, 30 he, for 30s and stuff. He confessed yeah. to me the other day. He goes, man, he goes, I walked right by you. And uh, and I go, I go, oh, okay. You know, like, but but thinking like we missed each other, you know. And, uh, and but then he said, he said, you know, I saw you. He goes, but, I, you know, we, I see you guys or whatever. And it just, it, it's okay. No, what I'm getting at is this. It was probably just like, like man, I'm here. Uh, you know, are these people gonna be cool or not or whatever? But so he went over there apparently, and then um, I think that's when we were getting buckets, yeah, right? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, come over. And somebody had said, Lewis, Lewis, tough. I go, they go, yeah. I go, bring his ass over here. And so we had uh, um, beers and everything. So it was a, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad you, I'm glad you did it, man. I've traveled alone before, and I I remember thinking, man, like why 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 don't my buddies want to rise to the occasion or my family? How come they don't want to go? And I go, I just forced myself to go. And I had some great, great times because you're forced to talk to others and, uh, and do stuff. That's I went to Argentina by myself. It, and, no- and nothing feels forced. Right. That, that's the point. Nothing feels forced. And it's so relaxed. And like we've kept saying about the center bar down here, if you wanted to come and have a drink, meet up with people, come and do it. If you don't, no one's giving you shit for it. I mean, yeah. you you know, you gave Sam some shit for missing the, <laughs> <laughs> but, but that was a, that was an <laughs> those are events. I'm talking about just the socialising. If people wanted to go off and do their own thing, like Darius, he went to uh, Grand Canyon uh, yesterday. Like people can go and do their own thing. We had little groups that went and drunk went and got drunk in different places. Yeah, mm-hmm. but um, you know, definitely you can tell people have made friends for life. This was my first solo trip ever, and I wouldn't blink doing it again i am the Very biggest cool. hypocrite on the planet because like as much as i tell you guys come out don't worry about meeting you know you'll, you'll meet mm. people i've never gone anywhere by myself and get this i've never gone to the movies by myself <laughs> and i've never eaten a meal by myself really and it uh, it's actually i'm almost terrified of doing it i'll do it man bridget told me one day she was wanting to go have food at the previous restaurant mm-hmm. and I, I don't want to sit by myself and i honestly have never done that and it terrifies me to do it I well, now it's even easier because you, s- you can just do this thing. You know, you can check your phone, messages mm-hmm. or whatever. So, it's it, you know, you have that. Like, even if you go in, you go, oh, fuck, they're watching this. You know, you don't want the whole restaurant to change the channel, whatever. Mm-hmm. You have your phone. You can do that. You eat, whatever. Collect your thoughts. I would um, do the food before I would do the movies. Really? But I think I'm going to try and Well, I haven't do done it. the movies many times. If I've done it, it's been, like, once or twice. And it wasn't, like, beautiful. It wasn't the world's greatest thing ever because I like cracking jokes and – yeah. I'm not ir- I'm not irritating, but I like you know whatever. 
cracking jokes, but I, uh, sometimes I just want to peel away and and do things on my own. You know what I mean? And so, I feel so like people would look at me like, is that guy gonna jerk off or like, what's he doing over there? Like, that's, what gonna, that's what I'm gonna say. So you'd watch a film at home on your TV. Why wouldn't you watch it in the cinema? Uh, I feel like everybody would go, hey, look at that loser don't, over there, scared, or maybe he's homie. jerking off or something. Yeah, don't be scared. I mean, <laughs> I, I really want to. I would do the the food before I would do the movies, but um, I'm gonna try and do one of those in the next like month or two. But I guarantee you, I'll be sweating. I will not like really. It yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Well, as far as travel, uh, I need to get. A you know, <laughs> I, I've done it. He's done it. It's it's not. I don't, I don't have a problem with it. Do you? Uh, well, this was my first like big trip, um, and I was nervous about it, but I would definitely do it again. Did you room by yourself, or did you find a roommate? No, I, d- I did it on myself. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure how it w- would have worked with the package deal that I got. But going forward, now I know people. If this happens next year, or when it happens next year, I know that I'll be able to say to people, oh, I'm coming out Wednesday to Sunday, or whatever right. it is, and say, yeah, we'll and share so a you cost. So you tell, you tell the... Um, I'm not sure I would have been comfortable, like, my first time to, like, be rooming with someone. But, but that's I, hear what, I hear what you're but saying. that's everyone's, you know... I hear mm-hmm. what you're saying. There was some odd pairings, but from what I've heard, everyone worked out, and, and uh, that was that. But, some, some you know, even the, the worst sites. thing that happens is uh, if somebody go, you know, somebody goes, hey, I'm only there for three nights or whatever. Well, t- toss me a hundy or two. Whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever you feel's fair, both of you. And that's just kind of your, your beer money, and that's that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You just roll along with it. So, I, I, dude, I'm so excited about next year's gathering already. Me too. I usually, usually I'm at a point where I'm like, Louis, you got to catch a flight, don't you? Darius, yeah, let's get you out of here. I mean, <laughs> get the fuck out of my life, right? And I'll see you in a year. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe because Ghost said the stress of booking the show during fight week. Who knows what it is. But with the hurt back and everything, like, man, like, that Sunday when I wrote what I wrote on Facebook, I actually came back just to see, is anybody there? You know, just to keep it going, like, keep bullshitting. And then I even went all the way to Luxor yeah. and everything. And then yesterday we took the picture. There was a few of us left there. We knew that it was it was starting to, to finish out. And then I thought, man, if Lewis Tuff don't show, I won't have that final minute or that final, like, handshake or saying there goes the last one you know so i'm glad i did see you and then darius oh, popped in as well yeah, oh darius is here yeah, <laughs> yeah he's, he's ruined it for me I thought so that I that'll be that but but i've already i was looking at dates next year of what makes sense and what doesn't it's tough to predict what they're gonna do with international fight week because it's but now we know that it doesn't matter right we were a little nervous about that but now now we've well proven that it doesn't matter. going back to what i said if if i want to build it on on um on a fight week mm-hmm. then the UFC is going to pick one or two. See, if you look at your calendars, July 4th, 2018 is on Wednesday. So I don't know from what it sounds like to me, 4th of July weekend for, for people that want to party, it would be the 4th and then stay through the weekend, right? Yeah. Versus the first party. I think you got to let the holiday happen mm-hmm. or it has to happen in the midst of the weekend. But Some people do the other, but more people do it the way you're saying. Right. So I, I'm thinking that might be the big holiday week. So does the UFC wait one more week, or do they slip in there before? I don't know. I don't even know if they p- – sometimes they plan in advance, so we'll see about that. I know there was a week where they were so thrown off by what Mandalay Bay used to be their host for that week because of the convention space that they moved it after they had already set a date. So if that's possible. Memorial Day is always a possibility, and I've thrown out September. Now, September is the last one to do it because – once you get into October, you're going to scare people, people that say, you know, Thanksgiving, that's a big holiday for people. Uh, and then Christmas, of course, because of Christmas shopping and, and Christmas itself and New Year's. So you want to separate yourself a little bit from that. So uh, September is probably that last possible month, uh, whether it be Labor Day weekend or sometime around uh, mid to the third week of September. So I, I've, I've been looking at that, but I'm already geeked out for next year. So really anywhere yeah. within a three-month period, that's not really helping. I'm joking. I'm joking. You're right. You're right. Um, basically, May through September, it'll be oh. somewhere there. Uh, I, I, I can't. T- I can't seem to pin it down. You care? Not really. No. Um, from what I hear from people, May is always easier. Yeah. But for me, it doesn't really matter. Goes and I have talked about something else too that I'm not gonna spring on you guys today. God, there was what if I if I had my way and it's it's impossible, but I would love to do one around New Year's Eve. It just can't be done. Think of the cost. Yeah, cost uh, is just crazy, and also um, so many people spend so much money on Christmas and all that that it's it's rough. Super but, Bowl but that would be so much. Super fun. Bowl doesn't seem to separate either, huh? 
Yeah. And then there's a lot of people that look at the game the same way I look at other games and go, what's going on? What do you do? Why'd they throw that? Why'd they do that? Why'd they run that way? Um, March Madness for sure not. Yeah, hey, you're not a whale. And clear. what else is there? I, I guess that's it. Yeah, basically MMA is that. That's the baby, you know? That's what makes everything go. But anyway, um, we'll figure that out at some point. <laughs> We're still the Junkie Gathering 2017, technically. Mm -hmm. Right? So uh, we'll, we'll have to figure that out. All right. I th oh, by the way, before we let you go, you have a, a good street fight story? Uh, man, the last three fights I've got in. <laughs> that still makes uh, from uh, one of my ex-girlfriends, which oh, yeah? was perfect. She was my girlfriend at the time. Okay. So what happened? Uh, it was a leaving party for a big nightclub that we went to every week for like three or four years. So like everyone, everyone I know probably met their other halves there. You know, it was that type of place. It was our last ever night. And I, hadn't, uh, I went with her, hadn't seen her for a, an hour or so. Because, uh, you know, we've got loads of friends there. And I'm standing there talking to one of my friends. She happened to be blonde, quite pretty. And uh, I see my girlfriend come in. So I, like, smiled at her. You know, like, say, oh, hi. She knows this girl as well. Mm -hmm. But she was so drunk, she, did, she thought I was just chatting up a random girl. And she just socked me, like, stra like straight in the face. Wow. Didn't say anything. Didn't look who it was. I was shocked. Absolutely. Where she landed? Oh yeah, like straight in the mouth. Really? Ooh. Yeah. Uh, like, my friends were like, "Holy shit!" What? Did you happened? go down? Uh, I'm not gonna go down. You never know, man. And you know what? It, it until you're in that situation, you don't really know what's gonna happen. So after but you I, just kind of like wiped your mouth off, got a hanky. I was. Sh I, I like. I, I kind of recoiled a little bit, and then I just just grabbed her by the shoulders, like, "What the hell are you doing?" And so then when you got home and sobered up, did, uh, did then, she apologize? Then, uh, not really. We we kind of like that was tough times for a little bit. But uh, then again, she is an ex. She's an ex for a she's reason. She's an ex now. She, yeah, yeah. She's an ex now. But we're we're on good terms. We're fine. Oh, you but, are. Um, and yeah. still no apology. Like that was bad. That was my bad. That no, night she or she did apologize later on, but it took a while. Did she think you were? No, she knew as soon as she realized who I was talking to, she knew that she'd been stupid. But, oh um, wow! The last time I actually landed a punch was probably. 10 years ago and every time I do I break my hand so um, I'd prefer not to get into them and especially you know I'm, I'm 33 right time for fighting in clubs and on the streets are, are over especially in London everyone's got knives man <laughs> really we don't have guns but they have knives everyone so, well not everyone but you know people who are going to get into fights in clubs they're not the people you want to fight with right your All middle right. name's not not so is it sorry your middle name <laughs> it's like I'm back <laughs> at school. That's what, that's what I used to get, man. <laughs> These are the best, man, when we can just yeah. have fun and say, yeah, yeah, someone got me, whatever. But anyhow, all right, so thanks for your commitment towards the show, listening. Thanks for your hospitality. Communicating with us, coming out here, man, on your own. That was huge. I'm glad you had a good time. I hope you have safe travels back to London. Please keep in touch with us. Yeah, Hopefully we'll, we'll see you at the next one. I'll be on the phone. All right, Lewis Tough. Thanks, all right, guys. folks, we're going to take a break here. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM Rush 93. We uh, will come back. We'll preview the second hour, toss out a little bit of info that I've been holding on to. And, uh, yeah, that's it. It's a Tuesday, and we'll be right back.
compassion, common sense. These guys have none of that. You listen to them, so you're no better. I we have matchups like Jose Aldo and Max Holloway, Claudia Gadelia versus Carolina. Kovalkiewicz, Vitor Belfort, Nate Marquardt. You know, that's not bad, I guess. It's 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 two guys past their prime, but, but they carry name, you know, value, and, and I guess they do mm -hmm. sell tickets.
right, here we go. It's the second hour of the MMA Junkie Radio Show. What band was that? I don't know. Oh, Danny, help us out. That was 30 seconds to Mars. <coughs> All right, good for them. Um, Danny. You know that's Jared Leto? Is he? Yeah, he's the lead singer of that band. <coughs> isn't he, isn't he a, an actor? Yeah, he was the Joker in the Suicide Squad. Right. He was in uh, that Greek movie. <laughs> This is a famous dude. The Conqueror, My famous Alexander the Great. Greek movie. Oh, that one? Okay. Yeah. What was it called? Alexander the Great. Great. What was that, that wedding called? My Big Fat Greek Wedding. My Big Fat Greek Wedding. That was a pretty funny movie. I was late to I the party. I watched it like 15 years later. It was good, guys. Someone before. stole you my pen? It. Oh, God, it always happens. Hey, what? sign the book. Yeah. All right. So, with Jason B. back in the couve, or on his way back to the couve, we wanted to continue with that segment that create that we created, MMA History Today. So it goes, who's filling the void? Do you have any uh, announcements? Yeah, it looks like Danny will be doing it from now on. Okay. And when Danny's not there, Victoria? Yeah. Or is this a Danny thing only? No, when, when Danny's not there, Victoria will do it or I'll do it. Very cool. All right. Call in and do it. <laughs> 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 well, all right. So, guys, uh, take it away. What do we have today? Well, first off, big shout out to MMA History Today on uh, Twitter. Mm-hmm. That's just their hashtag, or their uh, their at MMA history today. Uh, okay, 20 years ago today, Vitor Belfort uh, wins a battle of old school versus new school when he finishes Tank Abbott by knockout. Abbott had wow. a reputation of being a street fighter that could beat anyone as long as the fight took place standing. Yeah. At the time, Vitor Belfort was a 20-year-old phenom that had won all of his fights by first round KO. Belfort continued his first round KO streak when he finished Tank Abbott in 52 seconds. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, Today, Belfort often talks about being the old lion trying to defend against the younger lions. 20 years ago today, Belfort was the younger lion and defeated the older lion. There you have it. Shout out to at MMA History Today. It's kind of fitting, right, with Vitor fighting? Vitor is fighting. He's a few days away. And first it was going to be as a retirement fight. Then apparently it's just his last UFC fight. But he feels like he will still feel he'll still keep fighting in MMA after this fight. And with there being promotions out there that will pay and him having a name, I could see that. Where do you see him going? Russia or Japan. I could see Russia, yeah. I don't think. I mean, I guess Bell. It got to be fair to Bellator. He didn't have a great run in Japan. No, not really. So I got to be fair to Bellator. Maybe Bell, if Bellator sees something in Vandalay, then obviously they they could probably see something in, in Vitor. Same goes for Chael. So perhaps something. There's. I I feel like if Bellator's gonna do the route of a legend, at least have three possible fights there lined up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. We've all wanted to see him in Vandalay Part 2. And then with Chael, there's the Brazil and America angle, or or just Chael versus Brazil Chael's angle. Chael's got to win, though, right? Right. Otherwise, the people are just going to say, enough with this guy. And what's the other one? What What's what one other? I guess just him chasing a, another belt. Uh, but, uh, I mean. Because Carvalho, look, Carvalho, man, he, he's, there's been times when he showed me a glimpse of, like, Real talent there, mm-hmm. and then like there's other fights. Like I mean, he was that first man off. I was so awful that I'm thinking, boy, a lot of guys could beat this guy. You, even McDonald himself. You That's why I asked McDonald. Uh, you want to see him at all at 205? Who? Uh, Vitor. I mean, there's some good fights there for him. Imagine I Vitor suppose. and Mo. That'd be fun. I suppose, yeah, yeah. But uh, I would think, you know, if you're gonna win a world title, 85 the best bet. Danny, I'm gonna take the Marco from Waco call and then see if you can. Get our guest back on. We were having trouble yeah, connecting with uh, Eric Ash, so let me talk to Marco from Waco, brother. ¿Cómo estás, güey? Marco from Waco Atos. ¿Qué pasa, dude? <laughs> hey, uh, I'm going to call yesterday because I was doing Memorial Day activities, you know, with the family, so you know, I hope you guys enjoyed your Memorial Day. Uh, two things, man. Uh, the pay-per-view this weekend, I- I'm going to buy it because, you know, I, I am a junkie. Uh, but I'm actually looking for the Marlon Moraes Rafael Asuncao fight. Dude. That is going to be a, a bomb burner. I, I really want to see what Moraes got because they're throwing him to the charge right there. So Rafael Asuncao 
it's no joke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, you're right. They're very similar styles too. Yeah, and I for all the people that said, "Oh, they're going here to like, what do they give you?" Well, Manos Morales is a quote-unquote world champion. So if you're a world champion, you gotta swing with the freaking best. Now you're not on the in the little pool of world series of fighting. You are on the USA single swim. So that's what I want. I want to see if this guy really has it. Uh, that I said, I to that said, who do you think wins? What's your prediction so far? I feel like I'm Morales. I really think Morales is a real deal. So I think Morales is going to show, show up and uh, it's going to not choke the war, but it's going to you know whole court and show us that he's a real deal. And you know that's that's my pick for right now. Okay. I wanted to react to the Gustafsson fight, freaking uh, he looked outstanding, but even better, he proposed to his girlfriend. And those two dudes are going to have some little Vikings, dude, because, man, <laughs> that lady's tall. <laughs> She's a tall lady. They're going to have some little, little Vikings, man. That's pretty cool, though. And uh, they, they got to look at stand, and hopefully they figure it out. Uh, I think he's ahead of Manu on the picking order just because of the name value. And uh, we'll see probably a rematch with John Jones uh, in the future. We're going to let you guys catch your ball. Okay. Thanks for the call, Marco. You know, a few weeks ago, there was another uh, proposal. This came from the, the young lady that had lost the fight. Mm -hmm. That was Andrade towards hers. And we talked about should they, should they not. Er, look, Gustafson was at home. He won the fight, so he already has that time allotted. Uh, so if he's not going to tell us what's next, which he did anyway, you know, what he wants or whatever, then make it happen. Hopefully it's it's something rather smooth. Which it uh, was, right? It was. I thought it went off pretty smooth, and, and it came across great. Uh, the other one uh, was coming up maybe, a loss, maybe and if there was still another fight. Yeah, there was still another fight. Maybe if she's retiring, and that's it. But look, I'm starting a new life. I guess some sort of a transition. But other than that, just, hey, you, way, way down there. You know, I, They weren't even able to bring her in. And even then, it was, it was just slowing up. You know, and, and this was the last fight. Uh, and, and again, yeah. being at home, I, I, I thought it was – it wasn't an apples to apples comparison. You know what I thought was interesting about that? Even if you've been with a girl for a very long time and you know she's going to say yes, it's still got to be nerve wracking. Imagine fighting with that in the back of your mind. It had to have drained her a little bit, I think. Drained her? Yeah. Oh, oh, or nerve wracking for her or for him? For her. No, 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 no. I'm talking about Andrade. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay. I thought you meant, <laughs> I thought you meant Gustafson's lady. I was like, well, no. Nerve wracking watching the fight, but. Getting proposed to, you know, she's probably stoked. All right, so our first guest is ready to go. Goes by the name of Eric Ash. However, we know him as Butterbean. Seen him in the square circle. Also seen him in many MMA cages and rings. I got to see him up close versus Cabbage Correa back in 2006. He joins us now on MMA Junkie Radio. What's up, Butterbean? How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you all doing? Great, man. Great to catch up with you again. It's been a long time. We actually previewed a couple of fights once in the MMA world, and then, I, like I was saying earlier, I, I actually got to see you fight Cabbage Correa in Hawaii. Ah, uh, one way. He knocked my teeth out, and I spit out, and he went, oh, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> that one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that one. I, I think he had the broken forearm going into the fight or something like that. Did you ever hear that? Behind the behind the scenes, he had warmed up and fallen and, and I think broke a bone in his forearm, to, and he toughed it out, though. He still yeah, came he out. He comes up with a lot of excuses a lot of times. Uh, I didn't hear that, but yeah, he comes up with a lot of excuses. A tough fight. I think his ribs were hurting on his forearm. Well, that that was the, that was the word uh, on the street. He um, he still came out. He fought, and you you couldn't even tell because you guys went to war, you know. But of course, you did get the win. So uh, congratulations on on what was a a great transition from boxing to MMA. Which wait, did you enjoy yeah, MMA as much as boxing? You what? Did you enjoy MMA as much as boxing? I loved MMA, especially in Japan and. And can the travel and meet a lot of the really big names in MMA. Did a you, bunch of great guys. Were they on par with each other? Is boxing a clear number one? Or, or surprisingly, was MMA number one for you? Well, I think what MMA was. I mean, I went to the top team, worked with Laborio and, and uh, a guy named Shark, and they helped me out a lot. I was, was you know, keeping out of trouble. I mean, you can only learn so much in a short time. They helped me keep out of trouble and, and, and helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Do you miss competition, Butterbean? Are you, or are you, are you happily retired, or do you ever get them juices flowing? 
Yeah, I like you, but you know, the grandkids make up for it. I got eight grandkids and they keep me pretty busy. Eight grandkids, wow. All right. And uh eight grandkids. I, mean, I got I got a handful to to, to rush with right there, but yeah, the grandkids are great. You know, I I go out and do the pictures, uh I just did one this weekend when I do the cage. You know, the Brian Moore is really trying to help a lot of the older MMA guys. You know, get them recognized. You know, for what accomplishments they did in the sport. Mm-hmm. By the way, I I will transition to Legends in the Cage and everything you're doing there. But one last thing with the grandkids, do you show? Do they see videos of Grandpa? And do you teach them how to defend themselves, or is that something you'd like to steer them away from? You know, they, they defend themselves well. They know what they're doing already. It's crazy. I mean, they're they're already tough old ass kids growing up right there. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, you were quite a showman. You were quite an entertainer. Uh, a lot of athletes don't like being called entertainers, but you definitely put on a show uh, when you did fight. Where do you sit with that? Did you feel like as an athlete you had to entertain yourself, or was it just all about the athletic competition? Well, when, when, that, when a professional athlete goes out and gets paid to his sport, you know, amateurs, you know, they're, they're performing as an athlete, just, as, just only as an athlete. When you get paid to be a sport, you're getting paid to entertain the people. You're getting to go out there and do the best you can and to fight as hard as you can to entertain whoever pays the money to come watch you fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of people yeah, feel think, that way. I think more fighters should learn that. And that's the transition we're in right now. A lot of people, a lot of fighters just want to fight. A lot of fans want to be entertained. So we're, we're bridging the gap slowly but surely. We're joined by Butterbean here on the MMA Junkie Radio, former boxer, former MMA fighter. Uh, all right, let me throw you to my co-host, and, I'll, and then we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit of legends in the cage. All right, goes. what do you have for Butterbean? Butterbean, I know you have a love for boxing and for MMA, but lately there's been a lot of talk of crossover when they bring up Conor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather. Where do you stand on all that? Is that something you would be interested in seeing, or do you just like them being separate entities? Well, if, if McGregor would go out and get some boxing matches, I don't see, I mean, just personally, I, don't, I, I went through it myself when, you know, I went to fight in Vegas on a pride show, and they wanted me and Mark Hunt to fight MMA, and I wasn't qualified to fight a level of Mark Hunt in MMA. I don't see a commission in the U.S. approving it because of McGregor's lack of boxing matches. He just don't have the experience. It's going to be, be a boring fight. It would be a one-sided fight, put it that way. Do you feel like in, in MMA, say a boxer crossing over to do MMA, will he get more criticism and just d- more dirty looks than the other way around going into boxing and MMA guy into boxing? I think the boxing people have their noses stuck up a little higher than the MMA guys do because MMA is mixed martial arts. Uh, boxing is a part of MMA. You know, kickboxing, I had to learn the hard way. I, I stepped right into my first MMA style fight was in a K1 against a guy named Geeky Sue. I know, I'm sorry. It was Fujimoto I fought. He hit me, kicked me with a leg kick, and I'm like, wow, this has to get over quick. So I knocked him out quick. <laughs> but then I fought, you know, I fought again um, against Mike Bernardo, and he just leg chopped me. And I mean, I learned that's that. You better learn to check your kicks. And, and I learned well, a lot of boxers have mentality boxing, boxing over rules, everything. It ain't anything like that. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And by the way, the with boxing, I'm sorry. No, you the go boxing ahead. Boxing people have their noses stuck up thinking boxing is better than everything. And that's not like the MMA guys don't have their nose stuck up. They're like, we want boxing too. We want everything. We want how to fight is a, is a total round package. I like it. I like that. You're right. So right. When you uh, compare boxing and MMA, I do feel a little bit of that attitude. But we're slowly getting there. So Butterbean, let me ask you a question here. Uh, with you having a kickboxing career, a boxing career, and an MMA career, how would you say is your health uh, overall? I mean, we're talking to you. We're having a fine conversation. Yeah, my brain's working great. My hip don't work as good. <laughs> I see. Which is better. It's better than, than having brain damage or anything. You know, I've always had a tough, tough, tough head and a really strong, short neck. So that helped me out a lot. But, yeah, I got a bad hip, but other than that, I'm great. Now, does that mean you'll have to get, like, a, a hip replacement, or, or how severe is eventually, your... Eventually, I'm, I'm trying to get down about 50 more pounds before we do it. So 
So I see it happen over the next year and a half or so. Are you still the same size of when you retired, or have you have you uh, lost a lot of weight? I'm still, I'm still around 400 pounds. I'm about the same size. Okay. All right. Now, talk talk to me about Legends of the Cage. For more information, legendsofthecage.com. I'm friends with Brian Moore on Facebook, and I see a lot of the pictures, and he's constantly, you know, with – you know, traveling with a lot of the legends from the cage, uh, yourself included. But uh, I've never really had an interaction with him, like, on the show just yet. I'm sure we'll, we'll be able to have that one day. But uh, tell me about uh, about your interactions with Legends of the Cage, your travels, and where you've gone. Well, I was a super fan to start with, and, and he hit it off with a couple of guys. And then I, I was introduced to him, and a lot of the other guys were introduced to him. He, he is just trying to help. Bring recognition to all the fighters that before you have seen, nobody really knows who they are. Mm-hmm. Like you got Gary Goodrich, Mark Coleman, a lot of the guys that fought prior to UFC, all the TV TV stuff, everybody knows who they are. You know, they're, they're legends, but a lot of the general population does not a clue who they are. And Brian trying to bring awareness to them, like, these are the guys that started this for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody knows who Horace Gracie is because it was on TV. But Prior to TV, Horace Gracie was unknown to you know to the general population, to the unfight fans. And I, Brian's got to give him credit to our credits do. I have seen also Dan Sen- Severn and Sen- in a way and and so are you guys going to like uh, are these like meet and greets, seminars? Are you hosting parties? What 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 kind of uh, activities do you guys I do with like, Legend of Cage? Right He's trying to get a museum up. He's working on some sponsorships. And I'll put in a museum with a bunch of the guys' stuff. And, you know, trying to, trying to, I'm not sure if he knows exactly what all he wants to do for everybody. I know he's helped some of them out with medical stuff. Uh-huh. I don't want to name names because some of the guys are in, in a less privileged spot than others. But he's helped some out in the past. He's taken care of their medical bills. I mean, up, up in the forty fifty thousand dollars $50,000 range, he's raised enough money to help them with that. Brian's not out for any kind of money whatsoever, and he's just trying to help these guys out, mm-hmm. which I, I salute him and pat him on the back. That's awesome. We're talking to Butterbean uh, here on the MMA Junkie Radio Show, former kickboxer, boxer, and MMA. And you know what's funny, Butterbean, is the UFC recently had an athlete retreat, and a lot of the athletes are, you know, they're also starting to wonder what is next. You know, is the sport going to take care of them, or is the promotion going to take care of them? Uh, once they've retired. Because a few years ago, you know, the UFC was able to extend, I guess, their medical coverage, not just day of, but your training. But it's still not to the liking of what others want. Of course, there's talk about unions and associations, but that's a concern I've always had is all you uh, all, all you fighters, you know, that, that have spilled your, you know, your, your blood and, and tears and sweat for our entertainment, what's going to happen afterwards? That's the part of MMA history that hasn't been written yet. Well, a lot of the guys have really just spent the money as fast as they got it, thinking there's the next fight they'll save a little bit, but they don't. And it's not the not the promotions company's actual responsibility to, to know what they're going to do afterwards. It's like, you know, if you're a, a self-working painter painting a house, they pay you and they're done with you. And that's basically how it works in the fight game. There's nothing to fall back on. At one time, California, every fight that you fought, that it took 10% of your purse. Uh-huh. Well, that that's not even happening no more. I don't know where all that money went. I know they took it out of my mind. I've paid them ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to them, and now it's not even in existence. But fighters got to think, you know, long run. Let's let's make this big money now, and let's put it up in something to fall back on. I'm fortunate that I was able to do a lot of that. You know, a lot of the guys, they don't. They spend it as quick as they get it. And that's sad. That's, you know, something Brian's trying to help a lot of the guys out with. Were you able to save a lot of the the money that you made from uh, the three sports you competed in? Yes, I, I was very fortunate that, you know, my house is saved for my kids. They all three of them have a house. I don't want nothing. I mean, I don't have a full time man sitting in the bank, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting money here and there. Why? I'm doing okay. Why haven't I seen you more in Hollywood? For some reason, I, I just feel like you could be you could have a bit role, uh, a few different types of roles in movies. Uh, is that something that, that you would like to do, or is that something you just prefer not to do and, and 
and you know enjoy your retirement with your family instead. Yeah, that, that's it. I, I'm I'm kind of a low key kind of guy. I'm not. I don't start for all the attention. Like a lot of the, a lot of fighters do. That. If you see the movie The Wrestler, that kind of sums up a lot of these guys. I'd rather be well known and and seen and, and be worshipped. Me, I'm a regular guy. I mean, shake my hand. That's that's good. I'm a regular guy. I'll say hi to you going down the street. I, I just had a fortune of getting to knock people out and have fun. And I mean, I had a great, great career. I fought for over 30 years, 200 or something fights total. And I had a lot of fun doing it. But now I want to just stay low key and spend time with grandkids and my wife and, and my children. There you have it. Well, you were always a very unique individual, you know, in and out of the cage. We enjoyed covering you. And as a fan, I enjoyed watching you. And I'm glad that everything is, is great for you right now. I wish you the best of luck with the hip. One last question, though. Uh, Back when we talked about 10 years ago when we first started our show, I think you had mentioned having a, a restaurant business. Do you still have that? You know, I, I come back from, from one of my fights overseas. All the employees was just they didn't want to work. Nobody wanted to work and, and do anything. And I, I still own it. I, I actually turned it's 8,500 square foot building. I turned it into a house. And uh, so I still own it, but it's not a restaurant. I'm just... Just enjoy my retirement with the wife and kids and grandkids and, and close friends. Do you ever find yourself in Las Vegas? I'm actually coming to Las Vegas. There's a big uh, MMA thing coming up in, I believe, July. Oh, nice. Sounds like maybe the... I believe uh, it's July. It's a big, it's a, I think it's a UFC thing. Or it's a huge MMA thing. I'm coming in with Century and, and Laborio with... Uh, America Top Team. Laborio is a really good friend of mine. Oh, that's he cool. He helped me a lot in my career. That's cool. Well, I'll tell you what, it would be lo we, we'd love to have you in our studio sometime if, if you're up for doing some uh, in-studio radio because, uh, again, so much to talk about. But we'll keep it short today, and we appreciate your time, sir, uh, as always. It's great to, great to catch up with you, Butterbean. I'm down there, I'll just drag our big bucks down there and hang out with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, thank you for the time, sir. Enjoy your day. Hey, appreciate you. Have a great day. All right, you too. Man, that's great to hear a, a veteran and a legend mm -hmm. of combat sports like to be in a good place. We're we're a little short really on time, but him. when we have a, a little bit of a break, I'll tell a good butterbean story in Vegas. All right, folks, you're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM Rush 93. Stay close. We'll be right back.
up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. B A start. You told me that code would get rid of them. Yeah, well, they're still here. Okay, but now they know I tried to kill them. Hold on, Mom. Here are George and Goes. All right, we're going to jump right into it. We're going to talk to Oluwale Bangbozi. He is in Brazil. It's fight week. UFC 212 is upon us. He's on the main card, too, of this pay-per-view versus Paolo Boracinha. Once again, a shout-out to Brian Moore from Legends of the Cage for lining up the Butterbean interview. It'd be great to get Butterbean in the studio, wouldn't it? Yeah, he's got a he's lot a of good He's a cheerful stories. guy, and hang and on to that story. Everything. Hang on to that story. You say you have a good one, right? Yeah, yeah From the Vegas days? All right. Joining us now on the hotline is Oluwale Bambose. What's up? How you doing, buddy? Hey, what's up, you guys? Let's go, baby. Let's go. Hell on earth, baby. Let's go. You pumped up, huh? Yes. Now I'm fired up, too. Hell yeah. I better be. I'm in Brazil, baby. I'm an enemy chose. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great opportunity <laughs> on this card to, you know, th you know what they're doing here. They're they're trying to the the Brazilian fighter Boracinha, he's undefeated, out of jungle fight, want to know in the UFC. But obviously that we, we know how it goes when when uh, they line up these cards in Brazil with a lot of Brazilian fighters against the world, we'll say. And so they're lining it up so that maybe one of these can get on over. Are you taking it personal that they're trying to get this guy over on you? Man, to be honest, I, I don't really care, man. I'm one of those type of fighters. I'm so confident in what I and what I possess and what I offer to the sport of MMA, particularly to the UFC, that I don't care who they give me. And I've been like that since the beginning of my care, career. Now, although others may say that, you know, it's not smart, it is what it is. For me, it's, it's the warrior, it's the fighter's way. And if I'm worried about a particular opponent and or picking opponents, I, I believe that those kind of fighters aren't ready to be amongst the best and or the champion. So that's why I take the approach of give me whomever. Let's go. Give me whomever. It's my job to prepare and, and to show why, you know, I'm I'm amongst the best and, and why I deserve eventually one day soon after I rack up these, these heads, after I collect these heads, these skulls, that uh that I that I deserve to be the champion eventually. Well Wally, tell me a little bit about being a switch stance striker. How much goes into Outside of, oh, my God, like what we hear from the announcers, he's switching a stance and the angles and, you know, things like that. Like, how much are you actually throwing off your opponent by actually doing it and, and making it a craft? I mean, it's one of those things where, um, all right, so, I mean, I started one of the main arts that I particularly had a huge, um, you know, how can I say, uh, emphasis on or uh, background in is Taekwondo. And in Taekwondo, switching stances is of the norm. You know, we do that often. We do the, we, we do it all the time. So when I uh, decided to pick up MMA years later, um, it, it was something that stuck with me. And it helped me because it, it put me in a position to be unpredictable. Uh, and I know that a lot of fighters, they want to, they, 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 they like to choose stances and stick to it. But me, I realized that being able to switch stances, it gives me more weapons to utilize. And it also puts me in a position to just do whatever the hell I want without, really telegraphing in, in most cases what I'm going to do. Um, obviously, it takes work. It takes practice, um, be, you know, being used and better, being used to and better acquainted on both sides. But, yo, man, it, it, it's what makes me me. It's what makes me dangerous, to be honest, too. And I'm very comfortable and, and, and a natural at switching stances. I usually do it. Like, um, I'll switch a stance um, just to see how he'll react to it. And whatever I feel, whatever stance I feel like he reacts um, uh, to in the most uncomfortable way, I, I, I usually stick with. Does that make sense? It does. And I love seeing that because in MMA, you know, everybody's still struggling to learn all of them, uh, you know, all the disciplines and learn them well. And what I've noticed is a lot of people that want to strike, especially if they don't come from a striking background, they have to have their certain spacing uh, and comfortability, you know, sometimes they have to be planted before they do anything. And when somebody switch stances on them or just has excellent in-and-out type of movement like a Dominic Cruz, you throw the other guy completely off their game. Exactly. And, and that's why it's something that I'm naturally good at and something that I know um, is a devastating weapon and or two to utilize, especially in the sport of MMA. So, um you know, obviously, and in, in, you know, I've had a lot of success in, in all my fights and in, in, in movement that I that I that I show. 
um, and it's something that, that that's a part of me, and that's always going to be a part of my game. So yeah, man, um, uh, constantly switching stances, stances, incorporating different creative strikes, you know, traditional strikes as well too, um, and, and just overall, you know, when I'm in there, man, I, it's not just the fans that I'm trying to you know, uh, excite. It's myself too, man. Screw that, man. And then I'm like, yo, when I'm in there, I'm like, yo, I gotta have some fun in here, man. Screw this, man. Come on, man. Let's go, baby. What you, what you doing, man? Like, you know, my, my behavior mannerisms reflect that. You know what I mean? I may not tell him that. Or maybe, you know, maybe in this fight I should tell him. You know, if he, if I feel like he's not moving enough, I'm, I'm like, yo, come on, man. Let's go, man. Let, let's work, baby. We're That's work, not baby. a bad let's strategy. You know? That's not a bad strategy. It's, I like it's, that. It's, it's, it's mental, and he's got a lot of pressure because he's with the crowd. If you were to look at the crowd, yeah, right. if you were to look at the crowd and then motion him like, well, what's this guy going to do? Is he going to fight or not? I'm telling you, that can mess with people too. <laughs> of course. Well, and, and I know he's, 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 a, he's a high caliber fighter, high caliber striker. He's pretty well rounded, and I respect him. But at the end of the day, I'm here to win. Um, and I'm here to prove that I'm the, I'm the best. You know, and if I'm not, I shouldn't be in the UFC. That's period. That's always been my, my mindset, and no one's ever going to change that. And if you don't like me for having that mindset, you can kick rocks. Because at the end of the day, I'm here to, you know, to, to strive to the best I can be. You know, and uh, even if it means sacking myself up and literally working hard towards that, that, that goal. And I've been in a position where I've been working my tail off, man. You know what I mean? Like, I've invested so much at the MMA. I've sacrificed basically everything, man, essentially everything. And I've trained my butt off, man. So I'm here to conquer. I'm here to, to show why I, I'm, I'm a unique fighter and, and why I eventually, once again, is deserving of that freaking title. I'm not playing, man. I'm I'll tell you what. Big companies out there, if you're listening, if this gentleman ever decides, we're talking to old Wally Bambose here on the MMA <laughs> Junkie Radio Show, if he ever decides to just hang it up, big companies should hire him to just walk up and down aisles and motivate. Come on, let's yeah. go. Let's work. Let's work. <laughs> let's get there. He would get people to work and, and put themselves in, uh, in a position to get promotions, and people would shatter Hell sales yeah. records, okay. you know what I mean? Or maybe like in one of those uh, – one of those uh, Ivy League schools when people are slacking on the homework. Come on, let's go. What are you here for? To get D's, to get C's? Mm -hmm. You need to get A's and B's. It's infectious, seriously. Uh, props to you, my man. Thanks, bro. And it's fitting because I have a master's degree in public administration. So oh, there you go. Um, for me, it's, uh, I've always been a natural leader, too, a natural born leader. So, you know, having roles, salary based positions that connect to that is it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a piece of cake, no brainer for me. But, you know, obviously having that kind of mindset in the UFC, I think it's imperative. I think it's useful. And it's what drives me. You know, sometimes it's hard to find confidence um, or some type of drive. But for me, it's, it's easy, you know, and it's also easy for me to instill that in others. So, you know, I'm glad to be in this position I'm in, in the UFC, you know, and, and I'm encouraged, man. I'm grateful. I'm happy. And I'm ready, I, I'm ready to just showcase what it is that I have to offer. You know Aldo Wally Bambose, our guest here on MMA Junkie Radio, fights at UFC 212, two Aldo versus Holloway, and it's this Saturday. It is a pay-per-view. He is on the main card again. Sorry about that, Ghost. Go ahead. What do you have for Aldo Wally? I, I would buy his alarm clock. If he had his own personal alarm clock that would wake you up <laughs> Like that an way, app? Yeah, and it That's just rings true. every morning. He's going off, and he's telling you to get the uh, hell out of bed. I would do that. You should look into that, my man, a motivational app. I appreciate mm -hmm. you guys, man. You guys are awesome, man. Thank you. <laughs> Lawali, let me ask you this. Your opponent is undefeated. Is there something special about giving your opponent his first loss, a little street cred that goes with it? To be honest, not really. I don't care. I just want to beat his ass, man. I'm just my language. I, that's all I want to do, man. And to be honest, in my opinion, he's not undefeated. I, I, I you know, I'm one. One of the things that I'm particularly good at is uh, observing video on my opponent, and I watched uh, some video on his ultimate fighter loss, um, and. He, you know, he's not as invisible as he thinks he is. And if he sleeps on me, I'm going to put him to sleep, man, or I'm going to embarrass him. I'm going to embarrass him regardless, but if he tries to be aggressive, he's going to expedite his ass whooping. Now, if he takes his time, eventually my range, because I am longer than him, I don't give a hell how big he is. I, I, don't, I never cared about fighting bigger guys um, because, you know, I have the range and the speed and the power uh, to, uh, how can I say, to, uh, to, to match it, you know, to, or to, to take the place of what I lack. Um, so for me, it's one of those things where, you know, um, you know, if he if he goes in there sleeping on me, it is what it is. He's gonna get his ass whooped. Um, if he tries to take his time, I'm still gonna pick him apart. So either way, I win. Um, and I I have to, I've taken notes on his weaknesses, um, on the loss that he's had, uh, and yeah, man, I'm gonna exploit those weaknesses, man. And if I, and if he's gotten better with those weaknesses, I'm gonna figure out what they are on the whim, on the job, you know, um, you know, within the fight. I'm going to figure it out, you know, because that's my job, you know what I mean? Um, and I, I'm assuming that he's gotten better, which is great. And, and if he doesn't assume that I got better, he's, woo, he's in a world of trouble, baby, and he's going to make my life easier.
You know, every fight you go for the finish. I love your style, and you've only been a decision once. Do you think your charisma matching with the way you fight was what led the UFC to sign you so early in your career? Yeah, man. Um, yeah, that's a, that's an awesome statement and a question, man. And like, you know, I I think my management, Sucker Punch Entertainment, for believing in me and for giving me the you know the chance. And uh, you know, and obviously I had the courage to step up fighting Uriah Hall on a week and a half notice. You know, that guy was a ranked fighter and he's one of the most dangerous strikers in the world, man. And whatever, man, I didn't care. I was like, fuck that. This is my opportunity. I'm gonna fight him, man. And I just wish that I had more experience at the time, but I didn't. But that fight gave me the experience that I need for this fight now in the mental realm to defeat every opponent I face from here on out. I'm not playing, man. You know what I mean? Like, I'm unbreakable right now. I'm, I'm unbeatable. And for me, I have a saying, faith plus works is it's, it's an unbeatable combination, man. You know what I mean? It, when you have a belief in yourself, in a creator that has, has given you a destiny, a purpose, and then you work towards that, and you use those two, uh, you know, in a... In a, in a in a collective way to, uh, you know, to strive and or attain whatever it is that, you know, um, that, that is in your way, whatever challenge, mountain, or goal, listen, man, you're going to get it. You know what I mean? You're, you're going to get it. Just stay on course, stay in your lane, mind your business, and work hard. That's what's up. Hey, man, seriously, you had a blast talking to you. Good luck on Saturday. We can't wait. We appreciate the time. We'd love to have you back on our show. Listen, man, I can't wait, man. You guys are awesome. God bless and uh, enjoy the show. It's showtime, baby. There it's showtime. You have it. It's video game time. Let's go. <laughs> Ola Wally <laughs> Bambose, all the way from Rio de Janeiro. Thanks uh, for the That's time, right. Ola Wally. <laughs> Take care. All right. You got it, guys. Have a uh, good one. All right. See you. All right, folks. So we're going to go to a break. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM. Rush 93. Shout out to Dan for lining that ass. Uh, <laughs> like that. What? <laughs> lining that wow. up. No, you know what? <laughs> I'm trying to pronounce his name. I think it's Savigny. Dan Savigny. So I was, I was like, is that an S? Dan for lining up that ass. Dan, you got me. In. No, you know, Dan lined up the interview, so uh, he made it happen. And we had to call the Windsor, uh, the hotel out there, mm -hmm. go through a bunch of translations in the room, but we got it done. All right. Sometimes you got to go through a lot of hotels to get to that get ass. To get that ass. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Dan. All right. Uh, quick break. We'll come back with Kevin Holland on the MMA Junkie Radio Show.
they say Kevin's ready to go. They taught Andy Griffith how to whistle. Here are Gorgeous George and Goes. All right, we're going to just jump right into it. Kevin Holland is our next guest. He fights Curtis Millinder at LFA 13, the Marriott in Burbank, California. LFA 13 back in California. That's Michael Chavello's last show, too, as nah, don't get me sad. lead commentator there, uh, their play-by-play -play guy. So, I'm going to uh, we'll sit down with a nice meal and watch this. We'll, we'll definitely be tuning in. I'm going to put the pressure on Kevin Holland, and uh, let's see how he responds. Kevin Holland, how you doing, sir? Doing pretty good. How about yourself? Good. Oh, right away I can tell this is going to be easy. Kevin, I was going to put the pressure on you and say, please give us a good interview, because the last guy, Olawale Bamgozi from the UFC, God, he had a lot of energy, and I'm pumped up to see his fight. His fight's not until Saturday. So, Kevin, get me pumped up, man. What are you going to do to this guy on Friday? I want to watch it. It's Chavello's last show, and uh, you look like you're a killer at 8-2 and two on a five-fight win streak. Pump me up for your fight on Friday. Okay, well, look, man. I, I don't, You guys must be looking on shirt sure dogs. If you look on Tapology, Tapology is more correct. I'm 9-2. and two, So, that, that, you know, I'll be 10-2 and two after Friday. So <laughs> nice. So, Tapology is really going to have to catch up. You know, uh, it's going to be easy work, man, plain and simple, man. A couple uh, couple shots straight down the pipe, slip, slide. You know, it could be an easy night. Uh, ten has never been tested, but you know, neither was my last ten guys I fought, but they all got finished. So I think we'll figure it out. You, you, you like going out there, and do you feel like you're competing, like, uh, athletically, or is there a little bit of a street, you know, mentality in you where you're like, I'm going to light this fool up? Nah, you know what, man? It they they get it how they they get it how they take it. You know what I mean? It's like it's like whatever they, energy they bring to the fight, that kind of depends on how they're gonna get finished. You know, you get some guys they want to start fast. You know, they usually get finished faster. You get some guys who kind of want to like get in there and pace and take their time. Well, I usually just pick those guys apart. You know, and then you get those guys who are like really like well rounded. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about Curtis. You get those guys that are really really well rounded, <laughs> and you know, then you just take them out for the second or third round instead. Yeah. Hey, by the way, um, what kind of a relationship do you have with this guy? Has there been any chirping on social media or anything like that, or has it been pretty respectful so far? Yeah, 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 man. My grandpa actually came up with some type of riddle for him, uh, like a patty cake, patty cake type thing, talking about uh, Melinda runs around the ring as fast as he can. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I guess he got mad, and he shared my grandpa's Facebook post on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And it's been blowing up, and his teammates were getting all hyped into it and stuff. And uh, I don't know, man. I thought it was kind of funny. So I got on there, and you know, and I was like, bro, you know, I think, you know, you're not you're not really that good. And he was like, oh, I'm, I'm tough. And I was like, that's why Bellator. Did you, was he just feeling it on this one? I think he's just feeling it on this one, you know. But he, he's a clowner, man. He's a clowner. You know, he likes he likes to joke around. He likes to, you know. He thinks he could have beat up, you know, Royce Jones Jr., Sugar Ray Leonard. He thinks he could have beat all those guys. So, you know, he gets he gets a little full of himself when he gets around fight time. That's funny. Does he ever go to your fights live, or is he more of a TV guy? Sit at you know, sit back home and watch. No, nah, no, nah, he's there live. He's there live. He's at the weigh-ins. He takes his shirt off. He walks around. <laughs> when we're fighting at eighty-five, he lets him know I can make weight if he can't. You know, he calls you me all kind of. You me. Really? Uh, he does all that? Yeah, this guy's lit, man. This guy does not stop. Man, you know, he's what like. A Cool grandpa. 60 years old, and he just thinks that he can whoop the world. I love it. Is I'm he, just it, mad he could take his shirt off. I'm 38. I can't be doing that shit. I know. Is, is he like uh, – Dude has a – dude's more ripped than me, bro. Dude's more ripped <laughs> than me. It's crazy. Is he vocal while he's out there once the fight starts? Can you hear him? Yeah, yeah. He actually works the corner. You know, I, I hear him out there. Uh, I like to slap people, and he always like, you slap like a little – yeah, you know, and I'm like, oh, dude, don't say that. We're on TV. He's like, well, quit slapping people. <laughs> you know, so he's, he's he's pretty out there. He doesn't care, man. He now really I really now I really can't wait for Friday and Saturday to be tuning into these fights. Good so job, Kevin. We, we have Kevin Holland here, who's headlining LFA 13 on Friday on Access TV, and of course the next day is the UFC 212 card. So some great great MMA action coming your way. All right, goes. What do you have for Kevin Holland? Kevin, this is the main event. It's kind of every kid's dream, right? When we're all messing around playing, we want to be in that NBA Finals, the Super Bowl, a main event of a fight card. You get to do it. How many times do you sit around and just play this out in your head? And when you do, is the finish always the same? 
No, you know what? I you know I literally never play this out in my head. Maybe maybe even it was my first time being main event, but my second amateur fight as uh, for MMA, I was main event for that card. You know, so it's like I've always had that flair, I've always had that personality. So, you know, when they when they tell me it's main event, you know, I, I feel like what else should it be? You know, and it's like I, it doesn't, it's it's no pressure. You know, to me, I feel like that's exactly where I should be. You know, anywhere else, and that's a disgrace. You know, I mean, like, uh, if I'm not fighting for the belt, you know, something's wrong. You know, I, I want it all. You know, so it's never any pressure. I, I never, I never think about it over and over again. I simply step up and do what I'm supposed to do. You mentioned this yourself that not all of your finishes are in that first round. Can you talk a little bit about how it is that you blend that patience with the explosion? Um, you know what? I started off doing kung fu, so you know you wait for the kill. You know you can smell. I was like, you know, so I, I just I couldn't I couldn't put him away because he was you know he's playing around the whole time. But I, I I'm literally going to be ten and two. You know, they, they keep mentioning record, record, record. So I see a couple more fights after this, and I have no problem with that. Honest and raw. I love it. Kevin, this was great talking to you, man. We really appreciate your time, and good luck on Friday. Hopefully we can catch up again. Oh, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And it's an honor to be able to do an interview with MMA Justice, guys. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Appreciate that. All right, folks, there you have it. Kevin Holland fighting on Friday on Access TV. 9 p.m. Eastern time is the beginning of that fight card. It's also Kevin, uh, excuse me, it's also Michael Chavello's last show. You can follow Kevin on Twitter at ho underscore, uh, underscore what is that? Under uh, <laughs> underscore trailblazer. Ho, he wrote ho. Oh, yeah, for Holland. There you go. <laughs> I'm like, what? Ho underscore trailblazer. We'll be right back after this break. I'm the king of rock, there is none higher. Sucker MCs should call me sire. To burn my kingdom, you must use fire. I won't stop rocking till I retire. To link into the MMA Junkie Radio Network, hit us up on Twitter.com at MMA Junkie Radio. This is MMA Junkie Radio. Here are your hosts. 
Gorgeous George and goes. Shout out to Oren for lining up the Kevin Holland interview. Hello, Oren. Shout out to Dan for the Olawale Bam Goze Bamboze, excuse me, interview, and of course Brian Moore for the Ericish slash Butterbean interview. Did you have a good time with the junkie gathering, Darius? But of course, like every time. Yeah. Yes. How Thank was the Grand Canyon? I heard you went there. Yes, I went there. It's really amazing. I mean, if that was. Uh, uh, I don't know if everybody knows, I came to the gathering with my son, so that was actually, maybe we didn't go always together uh, during the gathering, but that was nice to, nice bonding time, nice so bond. to speak. Yes, cool. yes, that's a good, really therapeutic. Want the Butterbean story? Yeah. We were at Pride. They had uh, weigh-ins outside of Caesar's Palace, and Butterbean comes out towards the weigh-ins to get across through all the crowd, and the fans are just going nuts, right? They're They're going crazy. And he's trying to get them off. And Phil Baroni comes out with a hood and glasses, and he's kind of crunched over. And Butterbean sees him and says, hey, everybody, isn't that Phil Baroni? And everybody rushed Baroni. And Baroni just threw two fingers up in the air and said, Butterbean, you motherfucker. And he got stuck over uh, signing a bunch of autographs while Butterbean I went up the I do remember stage. that. I do remember that. All right. So we are out of here, folks. Tomorrow, the junkie gathering that uh, this drum, let's see if I can. Oh, and meet her. Cool. I'd love to even meet uh, Magnus. Chris. Magnus, yeah. All right, folks, we're out of here uh, for Danny and Goes and Darius. I'm George. Have fun on a Tuesday. Go out there, be champions. <laughs> Keep on the run, gonna have me